Ah, good evening and welcome along to the show. I've got tonight. It's like it's like every time I come on here, I'm on with the same people. It's, it's lucky I know them, and I'm, I don't, haven't forgotten who they are. So, would you like a couple of strangers uh, next week? I, no, I don't like strangers. No, I've, okay, I've enough friends. See, yeah. Yeah. You don't I've like decided. us enough. Imagine you put one in the room with strangers. Fuck's sake. I've decided to have no you friends. Even make them a pool. <laughs> no need to make any more friends. It's like, nope. That's all booked up for the rest of my life. Um, anyway, good evening. Welcome along into the Monday show. Into the Monday show. Um, I am, of course, your host, Phil Casey. Uh, and joining me tonight on my um, this side here is this just uh, the, mm. is Gav, and this side here is Pete. Pete's coming all the way from um, a basement somewhere in, in Catalonia as he mm. tries to hide from all the people who are the Catalans because so, he doesn't like them, but he lives there with them, mm. uh, which is impressive. And Gav oh, okay. is just trying to hide from having to put the dog out to go to the jacks and take the dog back in again, right? So it's, uh, it's the most important thing that's going on. Um, I guess uh, Arsenal won tonight 166 0. 6 0. Yep. They were yep, five 0 yep. up at half time. That's even Sheffield totally United were scoring goals for them. It was great. It was great. It's, it's like it's, it's it's whatever. Do you know what I mean? Um, at the end, Liverpool of the day, still have to face Sheffield United or Anfield as well. Hmm. Fourth of April, hmm. they're scoring ten. They'll probably have no manager at that stage, right? They're, they're scoring ten. Playing the under eight. Sheffield and they'll score ten with the under eights. I watched fifteen minutes of this game, and I swear to Jesus, Sheffield United, there was more movement out of fucking. People on mobility scooters. Than, than right, down tills. Down tills. Is, 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 is Gene Wilder still the manager of Sheffield? He is. Uh, he's back, yeah. He's back. Gene Wilder's back, yeah. Good man. Yeah. Back Good moaning man. about people eating sandwiches and strange things. He's a strange man. He'd be gone by the end of the season. Strange I man. like them. I like them in Blazing Saddles. Um, anyway, great. right, that's the most important thing. Right, so on tonight, we'll do the show, do the three topics that popped into our mind over the weekend. Mine didn't. Mine popped into my mind two weeks ago. I won't lie, right, because I'm really mm. lazy about this. Because Gav said, what's your topic? I said, the one I picked two weeks ago that we never covered. Um, so that's what mm. we did. Well, I'm going to talk about tonight. If we, if we get around to it, we might get around to it. We might keep it for another two weeks. And say, I can do this right to the end of the season. It's a great topic to keep to the end of the season. Um, right, where am I? So... Tonight we'll be able to talk about a few topics. We'll fill you in on the various different fundraisers and bits and bobs that Gav, Gav wants to tell us all about. Um, and I might talk. I might talk about it, or I might talk about the new time trial helmets that the Visma Lisa bike team. Are he using. sent this to me. It looked like a VR headset on your man's head. I actually, <laughs> I messaged you and said, "What games can you get with that?" Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's it's incredible. Insane. Yeah, it is it's incredible. insane looking. It's it's like somebody put a pot like a spaceship on top. stuck on someone's head. Yeah. It's, it's like mad. it's like it's like they took um the designs for one of the Hicks and Gillette stadiums and put it on top of a person's head, right? And then said, Do you remember Star Wars? That looks like one of those. No space balls. Remember space balls? That looks like Dark Mask's helmet and just let the This looks go like in. a futuristic version of a neck brace, you know, to keep your head straight. This yeah. thing just goes on the top of your head though. And balances you completely. Why haven't you, and there's no why way haven't that's aerodynamic. There's no way it's why aerodynamic. Haven't you, why haven't you figured out how to put pictures up in this show? Yeah, we could have put the picture up. At least it would have been. Oh, we can put pictures up. Picture yeah, yeah, throw it up there oh, so people can see. I have to set up a new screen. Now. you need. You oh, see, this is your laziness shining through. If you'd have said to me, Gav, oh. this is what I want on the show tonight, I would have no problem. Let me set up the screen pictures. and I would have put it on. Draw but you don't. You turn up and tell me at eleven minutes past there. So what we do you know me you know me right. if you want something done i will go and do it for you i do as much as i can for everyone everyone yeah. but when you're telling me well, 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 just put up the pictures you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> uh, expect professionalism put up the pictures there professionalism you've literally shown up and went tonight we're going to talk about uh, i'm not too sure uh, that thing two weeks ago i want to talk about and uh can you remember what everything else is what about these helmets That's put them on the screen that- that's just a charm. That's just a charm. It's, it's a charm. It's a pain. It's all there, all it is. <laughs> I sent you the helmet at five o'clock so that you can put yeah, it Yeah, but, but you didn't send me the helmet going, oh, right, so, right red to tip. osmosis or something. I was meant to go, hmm, do you know what? He well, sent me a picture of this helmet about. because he wants it on the screen tonight. Well, Pete's talking about Ten Hag, Everton, the squad or something. <laughs> yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of those yeah. trends. Yeah. You dig out the picture and then we can put it up before the end of the night, right? And okay, we, right. I'll, I'll, that's my job. I'll just sit here fucking... Finding yeah. stuff for you, fucking freak you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, yeah, it's, it's spot on. Yeah, <laughs> wait. Hold on, I'm finding it now while you're speaking to me. Go on, <laughs> make it <laughs> fantastic. Here, though, in fairness to it, <laughs> I, I'm I, looking I, at it here. I, it's I would enjoy, I would, I, would him, I might actually play it on the keyboard if it's it's that it's that. <laughs> <electric>. <laughs> uh, right. 
Okay, so we're on to the topics, and uh, we'll come back to it as Gav sets up the picture. We'll show it up later on. Um, let's get on to talking about the football, because that's what most people are here for. It's not the greatest, so they're here for the football tonight, and we have to wait until the greatest is, is back to talk about stuff that's not the football. Um, but, Gav, let's start with you. Yeah. And I think it's a good place to start, because um, Arsenal won tonight, so that probably cements their top three place. And I'm not, I'm not even joking about this, right, in terms of the, the finish. So we're down to probably one open spot left for the Champions League. Yes, it seems we're at the moment between Villa... And spores. So, Gav, mm. take it away. Well, do you know what? The fact that it's Villa and Spores has made it kind of interesting. I think if it was, if it was say, Spores and United and possibly Newcastle or Chelsea, would be kind of going, ah, you know what? It's just another fucking four. Now, that's not me being a dickhead about it because Liverpool are, are top of the division. You know, if Liverpool were in the race for four, I'd be interested in it. Mm. But, you know, it always seems to be Spores, Chelsea... Newcastle there last season, United. But Villa being in it is kind of interesting. I went, right, let, what's happening here? And you know what? Spurs get away with one at the weekend. Um, from what I heard, they were quite poor um, when it came to uh, playing at home to Palace. I think they win a 3-1 in the end, but they were, they were quite poor. And I had them in my bet, and I was fucking losing my mind after about 75 minutes going, how are they not beating this? Like, the only thing they've done to release themselves from anything is just got rid of Roy Hodgson. But they're shocking. Like, they're fucking shocking. Um, but I'm looking at the table now, like, um, Spurs have a game in hand, I think. Um, do Spurs have a game in hand? I think Spurs have a game in hand on Villa, which will push Spurs into 53 points. Villa on 55. Um, Gary Neville said a couple of weeks ago, he thinks United will sneak in there. They're now 11 points off Villa with 11 games that? to go. Um, some sneaking. And, That'd be some sneaking. Oh, like, they're fucking deadly at hide-and-seek. You can't find them anywhere. Like, they're amazing at hide-and-seek, right? Uh, they're kick definitely the, kick the can champions. They're fucking definitely kick the can champions. Um, <laughs> and they were appalling yesterday. Um, they get a goal, and, and they just literally put 10 men down you know, the middle of the pitch. And Tomine is a false nine. You know, it was absolutely <laughs> mental. Um but look, it's um it's just I just I think it's a really interesting one. And I thought to myself the question I said is who deserves it more? Right? Hmm. And my answer quite simply is Aston Villa. Um and for the reasons being like, no, don't get me wrong, I think Spores they lose Harry Kane, the, whatever their manager was left. Don't know who the fuck he was. Was it Conte was the last one? I can't remember who the last Spores manager was. was. It was a Conte, yeah. Um, and then, no, the, the Conte went and then they, brought that, they brought that fella in that just comes in every boil. Um, the young fella. The young fella that young unfortunately hurt himself and nearly fractured, fractured the skull. Cannot remember. He's a very good, um, very good coach. Roy Mason. Roy Mason. Mason. Um, and he was in. Mason. And then they bring in, they bring in Big Andre. Right? And he's doing an okay job. Posta Coglu. I think he's doing an okay job. After losing Kane, he brought in some signings. Some of them are really impressive in fairness. Though. But when I look at Villa... I think the way they went and got Unai Emery, um, because Unai Emery, in fairness, when he got the Villa job, is above Villa, right? I don't care what Villa have done in the past, where they were, he was kind of above them. They were pricking around with the likes of Steven Gerrard and others, right? And he comes in, I think he has a, he has a brilliant record. He's, he's very brave in the way they play, sometimes naive, mostly at Old Trafford on Boxing Day when they were tuning it up and just kind of, Try to lose the fucking game, but I just, I just thought to myself, who deserves it? And I think it is Villa, and I think we all deserve it to be Villa. It's something different, right? Mm. Now a lot of people, you know, going back, it's it's eight years now, I think, since Leicester won the league, fifteen, sixteen, and people are like, this is amazing, isn't it? It's brilliant, and it was brilliant that Leicester won the league. I thought it was fucking yeah. great, right? I um, too. And it was, it was, but it was different. It was something different. You were watching, you were watching them in the Champions League the following season. And, and I want to see what people think. Do do Villa deserve it? Do Spurs deserve it? Because it's only between them two now. Nobody's catching them. Nobody's catching them. But for me, I think Villa deserve to go in there. And you know what? Just to see where he can bring them. Because I felt bad on Unai Emery when he, when he takes over Arsenal in 2018 from Wenger. Because Wenger, for me, is there. I, and I mean this 10 years too long. Right? Mm -hmm. 10 years too long he's there. And he's literally running the whole place, like everything, down to fucking what goes in the sausage rolls uh, in the canteen. He was running everything. And then he just drops the lot on Unai Emery, and, and they don't give him enough time, in my opinion. And the fact that he's come back and he's taken, he could have went, he could have waited on a Spurs or a Chelsea, but he doesn't. He takes a Villa, he goes with Villa, and he's looking to get top four. I just want to see where he can go with Villa. I think he deserves it after. I think his treatment at Arsenal was appalling, and um, by the media as well. And just to get them back in there, it's a different name. And the fact that it's a different layout and all, it's basically the Super League just under the UEFA brand and with a league system and stuff like that. So 
I'm going with Villa. I just wanted to see what people think. And look, let's be honest, nobody's catching either of them two. It's just not happening. P. Mm. Massive club, Aston Villa. Really, really big club. I mean, for years, it was probably between Newcastle and Villa. Certainly 90s, 90s for everybody's second favourite club. But I remember, as much as I love Graham Sionis, I'd love to hear him talk now when we, when we brought him in and he got rid of all of our best players that he thought were over the hill or that he wanted to start again with bring in Rangers players or whatever. And they all went to Aston Villa at the same time and Villa almost win the league then. Ron Atkinson, you know, the, some of the, the great players, Daly and Atkinson, Dean Saunders, Paul McGrath, who is still, you know, regarded as the greatest ever player. They've won the European Cup before and they did, they won the, the league in 1981, I think, or 1980, no, 1981 or 82. I think they, they win the league in 81 and the, and the European Cup in 82 with 14 players, using 14 players. And that was a different game. But, you know, this is not a Leicester. This is Aston Villa. They're massive. They are absolutely massive. Um, I'd be putting my money on Villa, same as you, Gav, to, to go and have a run in the Champions League, finish toward in the group, go into the UEFA Cup and win it if Uno Emery is there. She just is one of those fellas that is supposed to win that competition for some reason. That'd be where my money if I was a betting man to go in. But Aston Villa, I mean, let's not talk about no disrespect to Leicester or, you know, Fulham or anything like that. Let's not talk about Aston Villa Football Club. Like they're not absolutely massive. Perhaps because we don't live in the UK, we don't really have a a, a proper concept of, who, of what Aston Villa are, but they are one of the one of the big clubs. Now, they, re they were relegated. They spent time in the championship, all that stuff. Aston Villa are the big dogs in that, in that Midlands, in that middle <laughs> clutch of clubs between Wolves and themselves, Birmingham City, at West Brom Villa are the big dogs, 100%. Phil, do you, I don't know if you, like, I brought this topic up, I don't know if you care about it, but is it like, like, <laughs> like in fairness, John, like, <laughs> John o says, it depends what different is. We uh, we hated different when Newcastle got fourth last season ahead of Liverpool. Yeah, look, yeah, I know that. What I'm saying is when when it comes down to it, and you you're not in you're not involved in this race. I just I just one I just throw Villa in. Just let Villa go in there and see what happens. You know what I mean? Because fifth place right. isn't getting it either. People are going fifth to be grand. No, it's not. Italy and fucking Italy and I think Spain are, are well France, above. even France for some uh, reason. Are, yeah, are, are above in the co coefficient mm -hmm. here. So um, fifth place won't be getting in. I don't think. Yeah, I, I don't care, and and I mean that like not in the typical me just Phil Casey. Of way of not caring. Uh, <laughs> I've not cared. I just like when it comes down to yeah, I only care about what we do, right? Um. But I don't think sports can make you. I think it's. A, I think the whole conversation is not avoid. And I think basically it's like everything. You don't think sports can make it? No. Mathematically they can, but that sports they won't make. No, no. I got you're, you're close, Pete. Um, I think <laughs> uh, for them to make it right, so seventy five points gets the Champions League, right? Mm -hmm. Villa only needs twenty points from the last eleven games to get Champions League, right? Well, Sp sports, sports need twenty game in four, hand. Yeah, but still, Wolves need twenty-five points from twelve games to get it, which means the Spurs have to deliver more than two points per game to get to the Champions League, which they haven't done all season. Whereas Villa can can deliver less than two points a game and get to the seventy-five point marker, which means it's an easier task for Villa to do. So, in my view, it's done. Okay, think I think they done? could just even, with, even if there was two points between them with eleven games to go, you think it's done? It's done. Sports will find a way. Listen, you're talking about a Tottenham Hotspur team that finished toward in a two-horse race the year that Leicester won the league. They were second, 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 and then on the last five minutes of the season, they ended up toward. That's sports. It's you see, for, for I, me, it's, it, you see, I, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's as cut and dry as that because I think sports have a game in hand. I'm not too sure the game in hand is against. I'll have to double check. I'm, I'm trying Chelsea. to remember. Is it Chelsea? You're just mm -hmm. saying that for the crack. I'm not. Oh, it might be Chelsea. Actually. Oh, yeah, because it was called off because of the league up vote. Yeah, I'm yeah. um, sorry, Ari. Um, but you see, I don't, I don't think Villa are brilliant. I don't think they're brilliant, and I don't think Spurs are brilliant. I think they're much of a muchness, and that's why I brought it up. Because you know, if if Spurs were storming back from a bad start and were just bump, 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 it's seven points, it's four points, it's two points, and they're on a run, and Villa are kind of 
treading water a little bit. Neither of them really are. I think they're, they're, they're both clubs that win a couple, lose one, win a couple, lose one. And I think it'd be very, very tight between both of them um, by the end of the season. And that's why I brought up who deserves it. I just think as to the, traje the trajectory they're on, I just think I'd like to see Villa there. I think, you know, Villa will take a massive... I don't think it'll be a massive boost to Villa, but I don't think it'll, for the long term kind of thing, I think it'd be one of those where Villa gets in and they'll do they'll be in it next season and you won't see them the season after. I think but if Spurs were to get it, I think it'd be a huge thing for them. I think I think balancing books, making more money and, and being able to progress the club because they're not in the I don't think they're in the best of financial health at the minute spores. I think there's a bit of a few yeah, things. They owe, they owe, they owe, they owe I, I, again I look the spores villa thing, they're basically the same club. Right? Bless me. Well, it's not, not. It's not, you said you said Villa are a big club. They aren't. Massively. They're, yeah. Spurs yeah, have Burnley and Sheffield club. United in the last two games as well. Just to let you know, they're both they're both so mediocre, uh, middle of the road clubs that never win anything major. So at the end of the day, you can, don't and don't even try to go at me about they won Villa won stuff in the time before they had even LED televisions, LCD televisions, right? They basically won stuff when the Commodore 64 was a dream machine. So do we, Phil. So do we. Yeah, but we, we've won them since, P. True. May as well talk about, like, um, Accrington Stanley winning the Champions League then. Yeah, but history, I mean, we're always complaining about people talking about football that, like it only started in 1992. Can't have it both ways. You can, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's 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 as cut as dry as you say it's done. I think if you look at if you look at the like, I think Liverpool have to play Spurs at home and they have to go away to Villa the second last day of the season. Just, just that's just on the on the on the on the Liverpool side of things. I think Villa might have to go away to City. Um, I think Villa might have to. Do they play Spurs actually? No, that's Spurs. Spurs have. Um, City, Liverpool, and Arsenal to play. So yeah. and so, right? So they also and Spurs have to play away to West Ham, which is a local derby. Mm. They play Fulham, yeah. which is a London derby. Actually, Villa play Villa play Spurs next week. This week, come on, sorry, um, and yeah. this Sunday. Uh, and that's why home. that's why Gary Neville says that United have a chance. <laughs> Whereas Villa Villa have Villa have Villa have, they, they Villa, have, have Villa have Spurs at home. They've West Ham away. Wolves at home, away to City, home to Brentford, away to Arsenal, Basically. home to Bournemouth, home to Chelsea, away to Brighton, home to Liverpool, away to Palace. And but Spurs... Like, it's basically the same. You know, just look at the same running for both teams. Um, and I look not, at, well, Villa away to Villa, or Spurs away to Villa, Villa away to, if Spurs are away to Villa. Then they're away to Fulham, home to Luton, away to West Ham, home to Forest, away to Newcastle, home to City, home to Arsenal, away to Liverpool. So even and they do have Burnley at home, Sheffield United away in the last two, but them three before that, home to City, home to Arsenal, away to Liverpool, is huge. Um, I don't know. I, I think most people in the chat are saying they'd like, they would like, um, they would like Aston Villa. Um, I'd like none of them to get in to be totally honest with you. Well, you some of them have to. Villa in the oh, some of them see. have to fill. You can't just nope. like you do this all the time. I just like none of them get in. None of them just. <laughs> Bill fans, like, um, fans don't poverty show for starters. So I'd like Brighton to get in. Um, Brighton. Yep, yeah, they're on twenty nine points, and if you know you can sneak in from forty four, Brighton can sneak in from forty nine points. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. Come on, Brighton. Like, uh, look, I'm just telling you, uh, Champions League. It's interesting because it's someone different. It, like honestly, it would have taken no interest of mine if that was United and Spurs and Chelsea. Be clear, <coughs> and I would have went. Yeah, I don't really they care. Don't. Bollocks, like you know what I mean. But with with Villa being in there, it just has piqued me interest. And then um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it now. I hope Villa. I hope Villa make it. Yeah, I hope yeah. Villa make it. Well, well and you know what? The only other reason is sorry. The Villa podcast, uh, Conan does be on here a couple. Has been on here a couple of times, and it's a fucking brilliant podcast. And um, they do. They literally just do match reaction to Villa, right? And it's phenomenal. I think they're gonna go and do more shows now, but. Um, they're fucking brilliant. I want them. I want them to post match reaction to Champions League games when all the madness starts. That's another reason yeah. why I want it there. So um, yeah, that's John McGinn anyway, taking on the world. Move on. I think it's Villa. Move on. Next subject. Um, no, uh, but, uh, but on, honestly, right? Can I ask you a question, right? Yeah. Why does anyone care when you look at the state of the new? Cha and I'm going to ask you when you yeah. look at the state of this new Champions League yoke. Mm -hmm. Format, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. 
outside of getting loads of money for your club, right? Mm-hmm. Who care? Like nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to pay any attention to that competition until February, when all that all the nonsense is gone. Yeah, they're trying to make they're trying to make it out that it's like oh, it's a big league and. You know, to be four seeds, to be to be all seeded, but just a lot. Of, like basically, it's just the groups put into a league. Like, but like, it's fucking mad. Like, you know, it, it's so fucking strange the way that. Like, why didn't they just leave it as it is? Yeah. And just went. Listen, the reason they're doing it is because they're getting thirty six teams in now, isn't it? So yeah. instead of so there'll be like nine groups. Oh, we can't walk nine groups out. Let's fucking do something else. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Like honestly, they could have just they could have literally went, listen, nine groups, you know what I mean? Um the nine winners go through and the seven best second places go through. And listen, if they had if they had a if they had to put League of Ireland a League of Ireland club in, you know, without having to qualify, I'd have been happy. But they haven't done that. So until that Well changes, there's thirty six teams going mm-hmm. in, they're they're seeding it and then if you're four seed you will play eight fucking games, right? Mm-hmm. You'll play eight games, um you'll play Two against, I think it's two against the top seed, two against the second, third, fourth, right? And four will be at home and four will be away. So it means bigger teams are meeting each other. And I'm like, well, they meet each other anyway. When you put the groups in, there's always two big, fairly big teams in the group because of the way the seeding goes and you can't be from the same country in the same yeah, group and yeah. stuff like that. But, but, the, but the Super League has ruined everything. Yeah. But you're going but you're going to be able to tell what it is because if you've yeah, told si- Hang on, hang on. I'm going to stop you there, Pete. The Super no, League I'm being sarc- I'm being sarcastic. The Super League has ruined everything. Do you know what I mean? I don't know when you're being sarcastic because every week you I'm, talk about Ten Hag and actually, I'm, I'm actually being sarcastic. Like, and that uh, Kelleher's rubbish. Don't, don't ruin football. Don't ruin football by by introducing the Super League. We're going to ruin it ourselves. I just think I just think you'll nearly be able to tell the fixtures because if you put everyone in and then you can't play each other from the same country and you can only play certain teams. In, so if you have, you know, if you have to play a, t- a seeded team Four second, third, fourth, and the four. So you know you can't play if City, Arsenal, us, and fucking whoever are in the top four, three of the top eight seeds. Mm-hmm. That's only five teams you can play. Then the next yeah. one down, if one of those Premier League teams are in the fourth box, they're in the second box. So that's another one you can't play. We're not on the Super League. It just, it just goes. It, there's no reason to do it other than there's thirty six. We can't make maths out of this. Yeah. Let's yeah. fucking you know what I mean. Like they'd have been better off. Just, off. They'd have been better yeah, off going. Listen, there's 36 teams and there's nine groups. And what we're going to do is we're going to let fucking three teams from every group through, and the four bottom shy teams as well, or whatever, to make the last 32. Just cut four teams out after all this messing. But they've they've worked out a, a, a league thing that's fucking mad. Absolutely. Everyone I just gets think to, everyone gets a medal. Well done. I just think it's nonsense. I think it's the most nonsense. Of the the level of nonsense, right? And um, so, Gav, to your point, who comes fourth? I that's why I'm sort of like I don't really care, and it doesn't matter to me because it, it actually at this stage you could even come sixth, and like you know it could be in the Champions League next year, mainly because of the merit position. If the if the English but the merit position is only go. done on, on the coefficient, and the coefficient at the moment right now is Italy, out, Italy yeah. and Germany, I think. Yeah, yeah, I know, but like, but like when we win the Europa and um, City yeah. win the. Champions League and England win be the eight places. Conference be eight places. Yeah, maybe, maybe so. Maybe so. But the more that get into it from the same countries, like this is, should have been an open and opening up to more countries, but it's simply not. Simply no, not. no, no. It's, it's just like a way it's, of making cunts play more games. And the funny thing is, right, you pay eight games to get into the last sixteen. I know you only had to play six in the current yeah. one. Ridiculous. Teams are being made to play more games, and then you have to play the <laughs> FA Cup, and you have to play the League Cup, and you have to play the Zenith Systems, Data Systems, um, yep. Wine Computers Cup. You have to play right. all these cups because they just want to put te- football on television, and and people just stop watching. At this moment, time, people have stopped watching. Like the viewership yeah. figures are down. Yeah. It's it's not it's not the same as it was. Um, and to the point, once teams like City start winning it. Nobody's an interest. Nobody has any interest in it, right? Because, sure. and, and it's really hard for. Well, I haven't watched the minute t- Champions League football this season. That's because Liverpool aren't in it. And I'm not even being smart. No, I that's true. That's the truth. That's true. It's a, I won't watch any of it. I'll probably watch the final when it's on because it's on. But if I miss it, it's not going to bother me too much either. You know what I mean? I, I, keep going, I keep going back to it that ultimately, when teams with no soul win stuff, 
it tears the passion out of football and people become less interested and people become more apathetic to what's what's, what's happening in the game yeah. itself. And they only pay attention to their own team. So these big competitions ultimately implode in themselves because you don't have what's going on. That's yeah. that's genuine. Yeah. If Real Madrid and, um, and, a, and another big team aren't in the final, if City are in the final, <coughs> like, I'm not, I didn't watch the final last year. Couldn't be arsed with it. It's horrible. Won't yeah. watch this year. What's the point? You know yeah. what I mean? Just what's yeah. the point? No, we're only... Um, Right. Pete, give us what's your what's your, who's who's on the foreign block this week? Is everything ten bag? No, no. Um, fans, no. what what do the no. fans do this week? I what? want to talk about Liverpool derangement syndrome, right? Um, and how prevalent it sounds like it is. a Paddy Power ad. Go uh, on. Well, no, seriously, and you know what? If you only have to look at the latest Paddy Power ad, and you can see. It. Listen, you're talking about a man like Gary Neville, who I never thought I'd see today was actually nearly crying. At when Manchester United could have went 2-0 up at the weekend. You know, talking about how City are going to come into the game. The fella didn't know where he was. It was just, oh, eventually City are going to... You know, you could you could hear them hoping against hope. I mean, the the day we won that beautiful, beautiful League Cup that I used to not give a damn about, that meant everything to me two weeks ago, told me everything. He, that was a, as we all know, a big fit of petulance when he called Chelsea the blue billionaire bottle jobs because he was so disappointed. Not, he doesn't give two shits about the money that they spent. He cared about the amount of kids we had on the park and the fact that he thought it was just going to be slaughterhouse in the second half and in extra time and how disappointed he was. And, I mean, we've deranged. I, as you know, I lived in the UK for more than a decade. I've been to every city there. I've worked in every city there for one reason or another. Nottingham, places like Nottingham, places like Reading, places, particularly Nottingham in the Midlands, you know, that have their own social problems. You know, poverty shaming, poverty shaming. We've twisted everybody's mind so much that they have to reach to the bottom of whatever horribleness that they can find. Listen, anyone that ever lived in the UK or that lives in the UK in this chat will, will back me up and tell you that anywhere north of the Watford Gap, there's problems, there's huge economic and social problems. And then some places south of that Watford Gap, like you go to the east end of London, you know, anywhere that's not affluent. England is in a very, very sorry state and even worse since Brexit, much, much worse. They're in a recession right now. So imagine what it must take, what kind of hatred it must take and derangement for people who are struggling themselves, you know, to put the price of a football ticket together to talk about signing on and sing about signing on, a huge social problem. I mean, it's unbelievable what we've done as a club, as a team, what we're doing to people. I mean, even the the fact that within, within a half an hour of a ball being dropped to a Forest player in the first half, that a ball being dropped that had nothing to do with the goal, and I know you guys covered it off yesterday, it's... I mean, I don't even want to talk. I don't want to talk about the United States about alternate realities and Donald Trump and all. But it's the same thing. People are so dug in to what Liverpool are doing that anything, even they're selectively blocking out objective reality because the hate for Liverpool is so strong, so strong. I mean, there's about fifty angles of Canadi getting a kick in the face, basically, and people are trying to say, "Oh, he recovered. He recovered." It's actually un- incredible the lengths they will go to show you how much they hate us. Even I don't know if you watched Match of the Day on Saturday night. It was actually unbelievable. I haven't watched Match of the Day in about 10 years. Yeah, it was worth watching. Just to watch no, Jermaine, Jermaine Jennings. Jennings was on it. I'm not doing that. I've seen the clip, I've seen had, the clip, though. He had a face. Gary Lineker is a very good broadcaster. Yeah, he but he teed like, him up lovely to, yeah, to do no, the but whole what thing. He, yeah. he, what he did, he was trying actively to cheer him up. All the way through, he, he one of the farthest players who's a good looking kid to say, Ah, oh, Jermaine, he kind of looks like you. And Jermaine was like, What you mean? What you mean? They're so pissed off at Liverpool. Like, Jermaine Janis has no dogs in the, in the Liverpool fight, but he hates Liverpool. So, and John, I think it comes from Gavin, you can disagree or agree. For 30 years, a lot of these guys had it so good. You know, the Liverpool were being humiliated. I mean, we might nick a cup, as Phil says, here and there, but we were essentially being humiliated, essentially by Manchester United. And then, because before that, they remember the years and years when we were kids, when we were doing the humiliating. They never, I think they just never thought it was going to come around. And it's the fear, it's like the old Public Enemy uh, album, Fear of a Black Planet. It's that kind of derangement that keeps them, it's like it keeps them awake at night, that all of a sudden, 
this is happening again. We can't let it happen. It's and it manifests itself. It's it's so blatantly obvious. Liverpool derangement sy- syndrome is on. It's just on. I I don't disagree completely with you. Um, what I would say is that put Liverpool aside for a minute, right? The tribalism in the game has gone beyond a fucking joke at this stage. I'm out of tribalism in the game, you know. I, I like I'd have, I'd have Dave Downey on here, and I'd openly tell him, Dave, I don't like your football club. I don't want them to ever win a fucking game between now and the end of time, right? Mm. And that's tribalism. I just don't like you. I want you to fucking lose. That's tribalism. Um, and it's ruined. It's ruining fucking. Uh, not sure it's ruining football. It's actually ruining how we consume, you know, stuff before and after games. Not during it because if you're paying attention to people on the internet while the football matches on, I don't know what to do with you. You know what I mean? Don't be on Twitter while the matches on. Don't be on fucking Facebook or Instagram. What are you doing? Watch the bleed match. Don't put your phone in your pocket. Um, and but the thing is, like, the, the way we consume stuff, like the the, the tribalism over it is off the fucking chain now. Like, nothing can happen without it being corruption. Fucking, uh, they want this team to win. They want that. And it's not only Liverpool. They want this team to win. They want that team to win. What the fuck's going on? You know, Man City's charges. And it just keeps going on and on and on and on and on. Right? To the point where, like, I have a Twitter account that's locked. Right? Because I follow people I want to follow. And I let people follow me that I kind of get on with. You know what I mean? I'm not getting involved with all these fucking idiots. When it comes to Liverpool, though, they're the biggest club in Britain. And I, 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 I'll I, argue that with anybody, right? They're by far and away the biggest club in Britain, right? And, and I don't give a really fuck what anyone says, right, to, to counteract that. And they sell. And that's what it's all about now. You go out, and, and I've, we, we've done this a couple of weeks ago. Go on to the Echo newspaper. Go on to the Mirror. Don't go on to the Sun. But go on to, you know, go on to the, 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 the Daily Mail whatever it might be in all their sports sections right and you'll notice a Liverpool story will be loaded with ads loaded with them because they, people know you're going to click onto them uh, but then it goes too far and you see stuff like the poverty stuff being somebody not on Forest to the day like Kev says there that was disgusting to me at the weekend Phil Banks are the norm now in the UK it's mm. a fucking disgrace TV are talking yeah. about a drop ball because Kev lived in the UK you know now, but, but this carried on again then because you know you have Mark Clattenburg right the Gladiators referee Basically telling BBC straight after, as a, as an employee of Nottingham Forest, as to what went wrong there today, he should be sanctioned over that. You can't come out and do that anymore, right? Simply can't, right? Then you have Mike Dean um, saying it was a monumental decision that Paul Tierney made the other day. Paul Tierney made two wrong decisions the other day. Both of the drop balls were incorrect decisions. One yeah. for Liverpool, one for Nottingham Forest. Two minutes of football progresses after that. Liverpool happen to score. Forest have loads of chances to get it out. Even the, their own fans are posting up videos of them with the fucking ball. With the actual football. And then moaning because Liverpool score. But see this like this uh, this LDS as you would call it now. Liverpool, the, the, whatever you call it. Syndrome. Derangement syndrome. What is? Oh, I've said it for ages. Does, 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 a, does, a, does, a, does, a, does a section of people that live through Liverpool winning everything and mm. then, you know, live through Liverpool and nothing, and can't for the life of them understand why Liverpool are winning things again. Yeah. And they are the biggest club in Britain. And when that comes back around, right? I'll, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna leave it here. Let Phil have his warning. Let me let me tell you this: Liverpool, Arsenal, and Man City are going for this league title, right? No matter what way you want to fucking dice it, they're going for this league title. When Liverpool were going up against Man City, Man City were check, were saving football. Right, of course. Saving football from Liverpool Football Club winning the league title. Saving football because why? Because the big boys will actually fucking win some. Right now, these boys that save football are now sitting on 115 financial fair play charges. Right, mm. 115 financial fair play charges. They were the boys that saved us. Yeah, saving now, the legal profession. Now, yeah. now everyone wants Arsenal to win, and that's where Gary Neville comes into the equation because Gary Neville has talked Arsenal up all season because his his way out of this is City don't win and Liverpool don't win. He takes City over Liverpool. But he won't take he take Arsenal. That's his fucking way home now. And yes, Liverpool do make people deranged. Other clubs make people deranged. You know you've made Liverpool fans deranged for fucking years. But when it comes down to it now, and in my opinion, the biggest club in Britain are flexing their muscles and have done for the last four or five years. And when it comes down to it, nobody wants them to win. And that's okay. But when it starts being the poverty shouts, the fucking the, the football disaster shouts, um, 
that's where it goes too far for me. That's not tribalism. That's just being scum of the earth. Yeah. It's yeah. as simple as that. And I'm not going to get too upset over it because when I do get upset over it, um, people will come on and say, oh, you know, uh, well, are you still going on about this? Yeah, I am, yeah. I'll yeah, still we'll go, go on. on and on yeah, yeah, and yeah, and I'll go on. on. In 10 years' time, I'll be here going on about it if I have to. Um, mm. But look, you're, you're right in what you're saying to a point. People do get deranged over Liverpool, but you just, part of that is part of the course because... That's what Liverpool are. People. Oh, it's it glorious. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it up until the poverty and up until whenever I see a tweet from um, from the Hillsborough Survival, Survivors Club, to be honest, and, I, and they're tweeting far too often for my liking, I, I always think, oh God, what, what's been said now? And it's terrible. It's terrible that those people have to tweet and they never, they don't have to tweet anything to Liverpool fans. It's always to rivals every week. Some fucking smart arse has turned around and said something or taken a picture of something. And it's disgusting. So these people are living with trying to deal with grief that they will never get over. And these little door boards, for, and I wouldn't mind, from nowhere, from the back end of nowhere with nothing, have the, the, the temerity to use yeah, the V-word. I can't but even that's, say it. But that's, but that's, that's a lack of education. Just annoys me. Well, the, the fact that Nottingham Forest fans were there, Gav, Yes, yeah, not in Forest of a certain era. Not in Forest fans of a certain era where I was there, but not in Forest aren't the only club to do it. For, but far from it. There's, a, there's a quite, I would say, a majority of fans in the Premier League to do it. But that's just a lack of education and it's a lack of intelligence because it, you you can easily go to a football game and you can fucking shout for your team, shout against them, slag off a couple of players, right? But, but And that happens all the time and nothing's ever said about it. But what happens is when you get really, really desperate, you start bringing this stuff out. That's where it goes. And, and it's not, I'm it's not, not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's right. So I saw, saw, saw a City fan doing an airplane. And listen, I was at Old Trafford for a Legends game four or five years ago. And I went down to the, the Munich Memorial that they have. And Liam Whelan, Cabra man, would probably would, would have been the, the greatest Irish player who ever lived had he survived. 23 years of age. You know, that affected me standing there. I won't, I won't tell a word of a lie. Tribalism aside, I respect for Manchester United that the way they revere the name Liam Whelan they don't let him be forgotten and to think that that little dirtbag done that yesterday in that game it's just people like that should be arrested and given six months and they shouldn't be able to get a decent job end of they just shouldn't it just annoys me so much Go on, it's not Bill, just I just don't care I don't mean that for fuck's sake can we just go no, no, but... <laughs> no I, 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 honestly P I don't and uh, the reason why I don't is because I know you, you guys are getting upset about it, but... No, we're not getting upset about it. No, 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 no. I'm not getting upset about it. But you have to point it out, Phil. And I know you might not care, but you have to point it out. Because what happens is, if you don't point it out and continues to continue to point it out, it becomes an okay thing to do. It becomes a, a just another thing that happens at a football game. And it's but I get Phil, I get your point, Phil. You're kind of like if I ignore the, them. Sorry, the poverty shout, the poverty shout, the poverty shouts are are, are, are are ridiculous, right? If you, if you actually look up the poverty rates in certain parts of England compared to Liverpool, like they're, they're worse than Liverpool, and that's not a competition thing. But mm. what I what I don't get is when you start when they start shouting using the word victims, and when they start going to this, you might not care, right? You might not care, but as a Liverpool fan. Uh, and uh, on a certain platform, you need to point it out. You have to because what happens is if you if you stop pointing it out, you be going to games every week going, ah, they just do that. Yeah, it's, it's okay. They just do it. It's normalized it's completely, completely, completely normalized. But it is normalized. But it's not Phil. It's no, normalized. No, it's like, no, sorry, it's Gav, normalized, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, Gav, Gav, I've let you okay. speak. Let me speak. Right? Yeah. It is normalized. And the reason why it's normalised, and, and people don't like this, and this is just the truth of the of, of the matter, is that it's not called out. The only people that call it out are Liverpool fans. It's not called out in the media. It's not called out in Sky Sports. It's not called out on Match of the Day. It's not called out anywhere because it is normalised. They don't give a shit. And that's the truth of the matter. You can you can say you can get upset all you want about it, right? As a I'm Liverpool not getting upset. Fan. Stop if, telling me I'm getting upset. Are, but, but you're saying to me you have no, to call no, it no, you, have no, to call you do it. have to call it because, well let me put it this way Phil let me put it this way Phil okay. if someone done something on you personally and everyone mm -hmm. thought that that's okay and you were the only one saying no that's not okay would you stop saying it's not okay would you if someone done something yeah. to you personally you would eventually just give up if yeah. someone done something to one of your family would you just give up 
Yeah, eventually. Ah, Jordan, because Jordan. maybe on you, Phil, but I've seen you, for example. Gav, know, hang, hang on, right, hang on, hang on, just, Phil. Just, hang on, let me back you up here, Phil. I've seen you, and not about you, but about me. I've seen you remember things that were said to me when you and I were eight and nine, ten years, and still remember them thirty years later. And I can still see the, the face on you going, "Why is that prick saying that to, to my friend who's black?" So maybe not about you, but Phil, I know what you like about other people. So I think Gav is right. No, see, again, you're just saying it'll become normalised. It is normalised. No. And to not recognise, <laughs> but Gav, to not recognise that it's normalised and that you need to take a different approach to this is to un is to fail to grasp the idea that when it, when when it has to be fixed and when it has to be addressed, you have got to change the audience, you have got to change the narrative, and you have got to give something new to get attention put on this. Like at at, at this moment in time, there is not one. There is not one time when those chants start up on the television that the commentators call it out. There's not one time that it's been outside of the Liverpool, uh, the, the Liver, ex Liverpool players. No one else calls it out. It's not called out. Yeah, but that, this, that, does, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that me or you or any of the Liverpool fans are turning and going, no one else calling it out. So we just stop caring about it and stop pointing it out. That's, that's a ridiculous argument. But no, I think I think the ridiculous argument is the the whole idea of a derangement syndrome and stuff like that. It's not. It needs a different approach. It needs the club to come well, out. Well, hold on. And, I think the derangement syndrome wasn't on the, the whole, um, you know, victims and and this and you and the poverty. No, the poverty stuff, doing well. The poverty stuff is just lazy. I think the whole original point was that when Liverpool win a game in any sort of controversy, which wasn't really a controversy at the end of the day, it was just a late goal, right? So you have to, as a defence mechanism, you have to fucking, them. you have to them. find some way for it to be wrong. I, 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 that's where Pete's coming from with this. It's just the explosion over this is just off the charts, which I don't think happens. The few. With, with <laughs> maybe one other club, maybe one, but, but not, yeah. not much else. Mm. Yeah. Ultimately, when you step back, right, and go back 10 years, there wasn't as many, outside of the United Games, there wasn't as much chanting. Do you know why? Because we were shite, nobody cared. Go back 20 years, and there was nothing, because we were shite and nobody cared. The only time that, that this stuff really came up no, was around true. the United matches and the Everton Games. What's happened is, we've become the other dominant team in England over the last 10 years with, with Klopp there, right? And all of a sudden, every club is at it. And you know why they're at it? The other part, that, and this is the this is the hard bit, Gav, to, to round when when it comes to your argument is the reason why the fans approach and and do that is because they know they get a reaction from the Liverpool fans. Mm -hmm. It's not like you say, I don't care about tri tribalism. I, like, and I'm I'm not making excuses for for what's going on, but they get a reaction when you're at a game and they're there to get a reaction out of the 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 the, the um the other fans. Yeah, I agree. It, you. I agree. It's, to, it's I the agree lowest and 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 but that's where it goes. It goes to the lowest common denominator. And to and to be to the Liverpool fans' credit, generally, and I'm saying generally because there has been instance of of chant of, of reverse chanting of the Liverpool fans engaging in in music chanting and stuff. It did. It, it's happened in the past. It's on record in terms of what's there, right? But they haven't. They've self policed it themselves to the point that they say, well, if we're going to uphold other fans to a standard, we're going to uphold ourselves to the same standard that's there. That just doesn't exist across the, because they're getting the reaction they want. If we suddenly became shy after Klopp, you'll see that an awful lot of those trans will just disappear because they, 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 they won't, we won't be seen as, as a big team. And that's mm. like a dominant team in terms of what it is. So yeah, it just I, think that Magnum, I think that Magnum Foyles are even more um, to the point where like this team are doing really well. I've nothing else to say about them but drag something mm. up that's affected, yeah, yeah. Uh, that affected yeah. an entire yeah. city for 30 plus years. And, and that, again, goes back to a lack of education. And I'm yeah. sorry that we've I've, probably me have dragged that up with regards no, no, and, and no. thing, but no, uh, because I know me. I know your one was more of a, a, a kind of what the fuck's going on here no, like you never won a game you know the sort of way. But Gav, you know you made a point earlier on about authorities. The authorities doing nothing. It's funny. I watched them. Um, I think Ruth Hullet being interviewed on the Simon Jordan's podcast, which strange enough is very very good, very very good has to be said. He turned around. He says to him, listen. And Simon Jordan, Simon Jordan was asking you know, about his involvement with the anti-racism campaign. He said, you know and what sickens me, Simon? He said, a couple of years ago, he said, we were, you know, no to racism. There's a lot of money going into it. He said, and then the whole the whole furor of it, he said, we got no reaction, he said, from the authority, from FIFA, from UEFA, token gestures, 6,000 euro fines and all that. He said, and then the threat of the Super League came, right? And he said, 
the UEFA stance went from basically get on with the game, lads, if you're being racist, racially abused, you know, you know, answer back with your football, to, oh, the Super League, let's, uh, de- well, let's go on strike. Guys, you need to go on strike. He said, it's unbelievable. The only thing that the authorities understand is money. And it's funny, I know nobody likes what about ism, but really, there is a, there is a time for what about, what about ism. The authorities don't care unless it, 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 it affects their bottom line. It's incredible. So, and you know, Phil made the point, nobody is saying that, but he's right, he's right. You know, these things have to be voted. You know, you don't chant about this, you don't talk about this at risk of whatever. It, but no, but nobody cares unless it affects that bottom line. And, and sadly, that's that's where the game has gone. That is where the game has gone. Nobody cares unless it affects that bottom line. And I felt, so, I mean, Ruth Hull is my hero. Him and John Barnes, my hero. And he sat there looking at him, he's like, almost like there's no point. No point in even getting involved in it. Nobody cares. He said, but the Super League, he said, 18 months later, uh, UEFA coming out, oh, we have to strike, lads, you have to do something. They were sending around paraphernalia, leaflets. You know, we have to stand up for the game. And the boys, he said, the smarter, older black players who've been through it were like, well, it's like a slap in the face, you know? But can we, to the, and just to close it out in terms of the overall point, like, you know, does this thing only matters when a club is successful? And and to my point, Gavin, right, and and really to to re-emphasise that 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 part, Everton fans until they hadn't won a trophy in a hundred years, right, never engaged in the type of chanting they're prepared to engage in now over the last five to six years since Klopp has been there. They were never ones to engage in the idea of victims because they and they've used it and they've put it in there which is madness right in terms of what it was and and even to the point that the club itself um has always been respectful and more so um brilliant in terms of how they've managed their own gestures to hillsborough and stuff like that so so much of this comes down to success and looking to get a rise out of fans that are literally have you over a barrel when it comes to absolutely everything else and that's what it comes down to. You think about the ever, the only reason the Everton fans will engage in that is purely because on every other level, Liverpool have them. They can't beat us. They haven't won a trophy. They've spent more money than us and they've they've ended up with a wage bill that's only a fraction of what ours is and they're going they're on the verge of re- relegation. That stuff is, is you're left with, well, what can we sing? What can we ch- well, think, right? And what's gonna what's gonna piss them off? Because I know when I go into work on a Monday morning it's going to be in my face and it's going to be them in my face again. And the other part is that England, that in England and in Europe and the world, Liverpool is a global brand. You know, you'd have the same thing in terms of what it is. So we've talked about this many times in the podcast in, in Ireland, the likelihood is the biggest game of the year is Liverpool against Man United because 75% of the adult population that's into football are going to be on one side of the defense. And they're going to spend the next day after the game, slagging off their mates or being slagged off on one side or the other, right? We have a very small version of what it is. When you put the, those people into a stadium and you put a small away crowd in there to try rile up the, uh, the the home crowd that's there, inevitably and sadly, they go to the thing that gets a reaction out of the crowd. Like if you think about what was the biggest thing that the people used to slag Arsenal off? They used to call, the call oh. whatever it is now. No, the library. They used to give it all like the big. Shh, where's your famous hybrid atmosphere? Whatever it was that they, in terms of singing, so it, it's it's there to, to it's to, to pick scabs that aren't ready to be picked off. Do you know what I mean? And that's what what it is. And it's not an excuse. It's just it's the reason behind it, the cultural reason, and the tribalistic things that get in there, and it drives all that negative thing. Now I think it was mentioned in the oak. I would, I, I, if I was the club, I'd make a stance out of it. If you come to our ground and you put those put chance like that into Anfield, the following year you just refuse to give them an allocation. If the league says well, we're going to fine you, take the fine, right? right. Give, them, give them ten tickets and pay a hundred yeah. grand fine. Yeah. And then if, if the following year, the follow if some another team turns up, you do the exact same thing. And you don't skate. Look, we're not putting up with it. We're not prepared until you come until you clamp down at the top level. We're not going to prepare. We're not prepared to have that type of chanting in our ground. Right? We can't control what happens in other grounds, but we're not going to. But I will say, Gav, if we deal with that and the club deal that line, if you think the chance that goes on now are small, right? <coughs> that's that's what happens. It's 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 a horrible 
catch 22 situation that the more you try to make a noise the more the club tries to make a noise the more everything that makes a noise the bigger the likelihood of those chance happening until something happens well, in the club i'm not i'm not saying for one second that what i said here tonight will have any effect on any football fan on this planet when it comes to yep. chanting about liverpool my whole thing about this is, is if i see it i'll point it out and i'll say it and i won't stop saying it okay. and that's that's all i'm saying i i i don't think because people maybe see it as just ah that's what happened at Liverpool games now that's the way people carry on because that's the fucking IQ we're dealing with um, that we should turn around and go well if they're just doing it what, what, what's the point in us pointing this out the point is, is they're just standing up for what you believe in and that's where I am on it. anyway move on because we're there with nearly time well no no I think it's, but it's a valid topic Look, we're able to dig into stuff if we want to do it right so um, and I didn't want to rush it because I think and I, I, I do agree with you I think I, I'm, you have said it Pete said it and everyone, people in the chat have said it you do Liverpool do need to do more, more Liverpool do need to go to the Premier League and go listen we don't really give a fuck here's the evidence of what's happening here okay and by the way here's the evidence so take a, a club we travel to this club and they chant about this on the, because of them circumstances, we're not willing to let these people into our ground. So what mm -hmm. we're doing is we're cutting it down to this amount of time or this amount of people. And if they turn up at Anfield and continue to do it, we just keep reducing it. And if you want to reduce their allocation, by all means do so. But we're doing it because of what's going on. You're doing it out of pettiness. And then Liverpool can make a stand. Because when Liverpool actually do come out and make a stand on things, people listen. You know, mm -hmm. sort of way. They don't listen to me. That's why they, that's why they don't do it that often. They do it when it matters. No. Again, though, the, 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 it'll initially be greeted by mockery, and uh, they're just trying to fix it, and the league are letting them get away with it, and the whole. Lot. And then it'll actually unwind, and and people realise that it makes sense, and and the whole. Lot. And sometimes, even if you don't want to lead, you have to lead because somebody has to stand up and make a, a proper stance. And I'm not. And this is what I'm saying to you. There's no point us shouting at the at the at the ones who are already there. It's how you get the message across to the ones that need to be changed that really matters in terms of what's there. But right, last topic, um, did you get the helmet up yet? Yeah, have already. Oh, brilliant, yeah. Right, so, so um, yeah. So my topic is: if it's not Alonso, who is it? Right. Mm. This is what I want to know. Right, and uh, it's driving me mad. Where are you I'm on just it? Being... In my gaff. Now, where are you on this? Like, is for you? Like, are you worried about this? Like, are you kind of like, fuck? Are you all in on Alonso? And if it's not Alonso, you're you're kind of going, ah, who else is there? Like, do you want me to be a hundred percent honest? Yeah. Don't say you don't I'm care. I don't care. No. Hat trick, it's a hat trick. <laughs> I don't know. It is a hat trick. I'll be, I'll be a hundred percent honest on this. Here's the problem I have with this, Gav. Right? Is I might, I'm, there's, there's, I'm, I'm literally bipolar when it comes to this. I either think it's all sewn up and it's just a case that they're sitting on, on their laurels until the end of the season, right? Or the other side is, I think this is without doubt the greatest shit show that I'm watching unfold in front of me, right? And it's hard, look, there's no, I don't see a middle ground. I'm sure it is the middle ground, but I don't see it. And the reason why I'm, I'm sort of leaning into option two an awful lot is because 18 months now, we've been trying to appoint the sporting director. 18 months, right? We sacked all the, the anal uh, analytics lads. The half of them ran off and met up their own company. The other half just got the heave how. Um, Klopp is gone and all the coaching staff is gone. And everyone's telling me, isn't it great that the academy's doing brilliant? The academy's doing brilliant because he set up the academy to play the exact way as the force team and allows those players to come through and play naturally in it, right? The size of the job that's in front of the whole team that they have to put in, and people won't see it at the moment because we're doing so well, it's enormous. It's absolutely enormous because you're, you're changing not just the manager, but you're changing the whole culture of the club. And even if you don't want to change the culture of the club, you're changing the whole culture of the club. You're not keeping any. There's no legacy. There's no carry on from what was there. There's absolutely no carry on from what was there. And because there's no carry on from what was there, it's a blank page for whoever comes in. But it's so, so, so concerning that at, at this point in time, if if Klopp, Klopp has obviously told him in January he's going, I have my sporting director. And I don't care how much it costs or if we have to wait until June to get from to take officially take the role. I'm coming out with an announcement within four weeks. If they aren't down the line to appoint in a sporting director at this stage, we're in like a we're in stasis. Because and I'll 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 do it in terms of what this is. So you know I'm a big fan of American sports. And the as a Bears fan, I've gone through 
years of waiting to what it is. And the problem with the Bears is they can't get the whole thing lined up. They can't get the GM, which is the sporting director, the head coach, and the quarterback lined up. It's so important in American football to get that those three positions completely aligned to where you want it to be because that's the, how teams have success. So when I look at us in a football perspective, I'm looking at if you don't have a sporting director that has the the, the support of the owners, etc., that's there, and you, he has the point as manager, you naturally create this frictious layer between GM and manager or, or sporting director and manager. That's not good. You need a certain level of tension and friction between the two to, to, to argue out what type of player did they want, whatever it is, like Klopp had with Edwards when he came in at the start. But if that's just frictious because the one one wasn't the other's appointee and it wasn't that was involved, then from my point of view, that's where my my enormous, enormous concern is. And I've seen lots of names, right? I, I wanted to talk about who was linked with us. Um, I don't just think it's such a big change. Everyone keeps saying it's not. We've got loads of great players. We've loads of great players in the Klopp mould, in the Klopp ways and in the Klopp methods. There's not another Klopp out there. You can take all your statistics and you can shine them up and then, and show me them. And I'll go, there's not another. There isn't another no, not, out there. Try, try to, like, trying to find another Klopp. If, you, if the club are sitting around going, well, who's the next Klopp? Then I'm worried. Because I'm like, mm. no, this is just, that's there's a laziness to that. Do you know what I mean? Let's find a fella that, like, you know, um, big kind of, you know, presence and he's, he's outgoing. And there's not many of them around. There's no other clock around. It's simple as that. He's, he's a one off right now in the world of management. Um, <laughs> like, I'm looking in the chat and people are going on and banging on about Amarin and, you know, Edwards and, and things. And I, I'm kind of going, you know, <laughs> like, we seen this stuff last week about Michael Edwards and Michael Edwards was approached and said no Michael Edwards is being approached again they don't know what's going on Michael Edwards wants full control Michael Edwards wants more control and I'm like honestly do you think like Liverpool are sitting here in the force of March and maybe maybe your massive worries are playing out in front of us where they don't have anything done but I would find it madness right that Liverpool know about this since November at the latest and we're sitting here in March and have nothing but I agree, and nothing in place, but I do agree with you on the whole lining things up. Because, like, if I'm Xavi Alonso, and I said this the other day, if I'm Xavi Alonso, and I'm speaking to Mike Gordon, right? Or mm -hmm. Billy Hogan, right? And they're saying, what's the plan? They're going, listen, we want to offer you a four-year deal when we have X amount of money in place for squad replenishment. This is what we think. We're happy to go, what you want to do with regards to whatever. Um, this is the control you'll have, you'll have the foot, whatever it might be, whatever promises he gives them. And then Liverpool turn around and appoint Michael Edwards as a director of football or the, you know, the head of football operations. Surely Xavi Alonso's going, well, hold on, what Billy Hogan told me last week, is that fucking true? Or mm -hmm. do I have to go to Michael Edwards and go, listen, I was told all this, what's the story? Well, that's not happening because I have a huge control over this and I don't agree with what Billy Hogan told you two weeks ago. So... I do agree with the fact that <clears throat> there's two appointments to be made here. There's possibly three if Edwards was to go in as the head of the football operations with a, man with a director of football underneath them and then a manager underneath that. There's possibly three, but I think it's more than likely two, right? And I could be wrong. And you do have to marry these up because Klopp and three of his staff are leaving. Everything else is going to stay intact. But what you fill in them slots is huge. The manager is huge. He'll bring his own staff. Fine. Right, whoever it might be. And then you have the, 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 the people above them. So I do think you have to line these up. And in order for Liverpool to do that, they would have to be speaking to two individuals at the same time and having these two individuals speaking to say, right, are we getting this in line? And that's the truth for you. It's not all done behind, you know, cloak and dagger. People speak. People speak all the time. And it's, um, it's for me, I... I'm 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 more or less a hundred percent on the Javi Alonso bus, for the simple reason is what I see out there as managers and get, don't give me all this hammer and stuff. No one fucking knows anything about him. People are real enough to them. I feel you know I, I think it'll be him. You know, but nobody knows fuck all about him, right? So and right, you might know a little bit about him, but like people are carrying on as if like oh he's the second coming of Christ and you know all this sort of stuff. The, the the reason I have Alonso is, and I've said it loads of times, I don't like romantic appointments. The, the, the mm -hmm. thoughts of Steven Gerrard as Liverpool manager makes me sh 
shudder. Shudder. Right? Me too. Right? But, but, but what I see in Alonso is, is that because of the situation at Liverpool, as how good they are, right? The minimum amount of people you will need to bring in to slot him with what's already there, okay? And getting a sporting director, which he's comfortable working under. He's current, he's in that situation, I think, at the moment in Leverkusen. But to bring him in and, and say, listen, this is their way of doing things, it makes the most sense. Plus, I think it leads to the least upheaval because I think he's the most open to knowing what Liverpool are about firsthand. Secondly, he's managed in Europe, so he knows the director of football thing really well. Right, he knows that, and he's played in brilliant football teams as well. But on top of it all, I think he's the most open to taking this squad as he sees it and developing it without this massive ego of his going, I have to get this fucking big Jurgen Klopp thing off my shoulder here and get rid of him by just dismantling this team. And I think the likes of, you know, those managers being mentioned like Nagelsmann and all these players, they will come in and their ego will kill them. Like if Thomas mm-hmm. Tuchel turned up at Liverpool in August, I guarantee he'd want four or five players out the door because he just turned and go, I'm making this Thomas Tuchel side. For the for the better of nobody, only myself, to say it's if I if I achieve anything, they can't throw clock back at me. That's where I am with it. But listen, if Amarim comes in, don't know who he is, right? Mm-hmm. But you'd have to trust that the club, given the amount of time they have to sort this out, will get all the ducks in the line to keep you have to remember it's in their interest to keep it in line. It's in their interest to keep making the money and keep turning it over and being the, the self-sufficient club. Otherwise, you're, you're in fucking trouble. And I think the fact that Klopp's given them basically a, a fucking seven, eight-month run at this, they've loads of time with Klopp's input to make the right appointment. That's where I am in it. But I, I'm close to it being, if it's not Alonso, who the fuck else? Because as much as Alonso may worry you, others worry me more. Mm. I, I, this is where I, I like the the whole thing is that it's a stats based search in terms of and a database search that's going to drive it right, and you're looking at the name of the managers that fit most into the into the patterns that we play, which is Stuttgart, which is Feyenoord, which is even um, Ruben Amorim's um, sport in Lisbon, right? So they're all guys who either so your man Arna Slot, the 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 Feyenoord manager, is interesting because his his team play a very similar style and apparently uh, being linked to Bayern him as well. Yeah, well, of course, Which is a more natural, more that's a more natural thing. I mean, Bayern Munich though is where is a is a club. Well, Pete, it's not a more natural thing because Javi Alonso is is currently playing in the Bundesliga. No, I'm saying I'm saying he's is more natural to go to Bayern. Like for me, Bayern Munich is where coaches go to die. You know, there's people talk about our structure being broken. Bayern Munich has a system where if you're the older you are, if you're a Bayern Munich legend from the 1970s and you've still got a pulse uh, and an ego, you go into that superstructure where the coach literally just puts the cones out and picks the team and you get told to do it by guys like Oliver Kahn and people like that. It's the most, apparently it's the most toxic environment in Europe. If you're not winning absolutely everything and even when you do win everything, if you don't win it their way, I mean, even the great saviour of football, Pep Guardiola struggled. Now, I know that he didn't win the European, but he struggled there. You know, so it seems to be a very, very toxic. I can't see, I think it's a lazy thing. Bayern Munich are desperate because they want, they see that. The, the, this telltale sign for me, Phil, would be that nobody else seems to be sniffing around Xabi Alonso. You know, don't hear them linked to Real Madrid. I think everybody accepts that the deal is done. People are throwing Almiron and all these, or whatever his name is, all these guys into the, their names into a pot because that's what people like, I don't know, the grizzlies of this world, they do get people talking, you know, and that's fine. That's their job. That's why they exist. However, I be in the camp. Liverpool have learned from not being prepared years and years ago. Be prepared. If Klopp had the good grace, which he did months ago, to let them know what he's in, they have had this prepared. Why would he go to Bayern to to take over a team that he's already shown that he can humiliate? I think the deal is done. But, it's just a matter of what the structure is in the club. But the the, the, only, the, only, the only argument is about the yeah. Liverpool. Like we, we love Xabi Alonso as a footballer, um, both at Liverpool and then at, at Bayern and, and Madrid. And we, you know, I'm not a big fan of Madrid, but Xabi yeah. Alonso would watch playing football all fucking day. Toxic. Um, yeah. But but the thing is, like we we have to. We have to kind of take into consideration a Liverpool football club sitting there going, Yeah, we want Javi Alonso. You know, is the data telling them to go for Javi Alonso? Is is uh, Javi Alonso's initial reaction is, oh, I'm not too sure, I'm here, and you know, sort of way. And and remember, like Liverpool are quite loyal to their managers, so you know, Javi Alonso could be 
chomping at the bit to take the Liverpool job because he knows and he mightn't come up for another decade. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? If things go well, it mightn't come up for another decade. And then 10 years' time, Xavi Alonso might be managing in the you know, mid table in the Bundesliga. Then again, he could be managing Real Madrid. We don't know, you know. So it's, it's as much as we're looking at from our point of view, from the club's point of view, they might see something different. They might see something different. Um, but to the what, start of your sentence, they have, right? <laughs> Who would he tell him? Who would he tell him? But it's the talk to Billy Hogan, Theo Epstein. No, in, 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 reg- in regard in regards to in regards to the information that's coming out, I don't think anything's coming. I don't think a single drop of information has come out of Liverpool Football Club about who their next manager will be. I don't think a single drop of information has come out of Liverpool Football Club about who their next sporting director will be or head of football operations. The Michael Edwards stuff, like if you if you break down the Michael Edwards stuff, they asked him, he said no, they're asking him again, he's not too happy, he wants more control. Like, where the fuck are we here? This isn't we're not barking over something on bleeding Facebook marketplace here. We're talking about becoming in and literally taking part and running one of the biggest football clubs in the world. You know what I mean? And that's not how we operate. It's mm. simply not how we operate. And even if there's any any truth in the fact that we're after Michael Edwards, the chances are we spoke to him five or six weeks ago and this is filtering through right now and it's being reported now because this is a great time to report it. You know the sort of way it's <coughs> for me I'm I'm a bit kind of look it'll sort itself out it's it'll become a huge issue when this football season is over but until then it's just not an issue we have a fucking manager we have a squad and we've allowed the trophies to go and get the issue will sort itself when it's needs sorting and i i refuse to believe (coughs) well i refuse to believe that we'll get to the end of may i think the last game is scheduled for i want to say the 25th Fifth of May. Only forced, no? Only no, the nineteenth is the league, and then you have the, the the other two after that. Um, but I refuse to believe when we get to the twenty fifth of May, the Liverpool are sitting there going, "Look, we make the biggest deal of Jurgen Klopp as he's leaving, but we have the other fella ready." There's just mm. they're not going to sit there. And it, if there's something being done, I'd say it's close. But and I, I, I yeah. want it to be Alonso. I'm, I'm, but if it's not Alonso, they've obviously that, that, that it's it's not like they're sitting there going, "If it's not Alonso, what are we going to do?" I know, and I think like at the end of it all, when you stand back and you say, "From if I'm Alonso, the question, the only question I have in my head if I'm Alonso is, do I want to be the man that follows Klopp?" Genuinely, that's but the only ask, question. I have but if you head. ask, but if you ask, but if you ask anybody that, that's the downs. The only downside to this job is you're following Klopp. But mm-hmm. I think that uh, you see, I'd put a positive on that, and I'd say to myself, "Listen, are you, how much pressure are you actually under to go into Liverpool and keep that going?" At, the, at that rate, after following him, because he's a one-off. We keep saying he's a one-off. There's no one like him. How much pressure you under? And I think to tick more boxes for Xavi Alonso, he, people are saying that it's a completely different club. It is, but look, Xavi Alonso, I would say, has always kept in contact with certain people at that club over the last what, 15 years since he left. You know what I mean? He'll know it. He'll know he can ring anybody and find out information about the football club. But he gets the most patience. He gets the most leeway. Like, other managers come in and start ripping players. Like, soon has come in and done it in the early 90s, right? <laughs> if someone comes in there and decides, I'm ripping this apart, and Liverpool are 10th or 11th in the league, they'll be fucking up, bro. Because what, what, over your own ego, you decided you need to pull this apart. <laughs> now, there might be players there that we think are brilliant, won't suit a system. That's fine. That happens. But the most open to a really, really good squad for me, and more importantly, those youngsters, because look, look at what Alonso's doing. At. There's a lot of young, there's a lot of young players in that fucking team, a Leverkusen mm. as well. And he, the most open for me, and um, because he won't let his ego get in the way of it, will be Xavi Alonso. And if mm. I'm Xavi Alonso and I win a league title next year, people go, "That was Klopp's side." Yeah, it was. Yeah, fair fucking play to him. Yeah. Because it made it easy for me to go and win this league. I mean, Here's me won. medal. Yeah. Here's me medal. Yeah. And by the way, here's the medal I won in Germany last year. Yeah. So it, I think. I want it to be Alonso, but if it's not Alonso, you have to trust the club that they've had enough time to go and deal with. I'm amazed there isn't a big movement to talk to Rafa again. Oh, that's what, that's, he, know, he knows the city. That's, that's, that, that's been the, the one since 2009. Until no, if, 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 if there's ever a manager that the game has passed by, it's him. Yeah. And, him and, and Mourinho. Mourinho. Um, yeah, and I, I, think, I think but people play down Mourinho a little bit, um, but I think Benitez has... Benitez was brilliant in that 2000 to 2000 kind of 10 period. And then I think it just passes him by. I yeah. think the, the game just gets too... 
I had Pete Gerrard as well. It's like they made. It's like they doubled the size of the goals of Benitez with me bollocks. Now I'm not playing with this. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. that's where we are. To, to be fair, if if there was one person that if if you weren't going the data route in terms of what was all there. And Carlo was available. I'd I'd go after Carlo because I think if like coming you. in after Klopp. Yeah, I think coming in after Klopp, his his personality will be ideal for the players and the squad that's there. Yeah. You can still line up. You know he's only going to be there for for two or three years, and you can start to give yourself a, a runway to to the next manager then and understand the open coming and have it in place. But that needs the sporting director to, to also be in situ. And, and and just it's just an alternative way of doing what they're looking to do, which yeah. is like not the, not the Roy Hodgson method, but the you know a really top level manager who knows how to extract the best from the squad that's there isn't necessarily a squad builder. You know what I mean? Yeah. These are all great, so am I. Let's go and win things. That's his attitude. Even his demeanor. You know, it's like I'm great. I was a great player. I be, great look, I look, great the, the story's going to run and run, right? And every time there's in, like the international place is going to be berserk with it. We just know that, right? Um, but Liverpool fans just, if, if, if I'm like, I'm a Liverpool fan, and the way I look at it is, we've other stuff to worry about here. You know what I mean? Like, it should be Name way me. down. A helmet. Will you put the helmet up to show the world the helmet? Down. Anyway, listen, um, that's, the, yeah. Alonso, we'll see, but um, we've much more to be worrying about than, than Javi Alonso. Than so it. I yeah. think you all need to understand what's coming up here, right? This right. is now, this is, look at yes. this. This is how you make yourself super fast on a bike. And I'm only saying this because I, I start with races this week. It's, look that's at that the biggest load of bollocks I've ever seen. <laughs> It's Alien genuinely man. the biggest load. There's no way that's aerodynamic for you cycling a fucking bike. It's, I'm I, sorry. I'm, I'm, I get one of those helmets. I'm going to go cycle around town with those helmets on me. It'd be immense. right? <laughs> it's like a fucking melted fucking milk crate. He's just stuck in his mallet. It's, and poor. He, it's poor. It's like, it's like you know, when, when you when you see like a cheap knockoff version of Star Wars and they're trying to figure out how do we make the helmets that look a bit different but aren't the same as but still look a bit like so that people and, think it's a the yellow. <laughs> I the yellow you know, like, it's I don't know what do people think of that like people listen tomorrow be like what were you doing what were you doing like um, I don't know type in new boy county uh, type in Visma Visma V-I-S-M-A Visma yellow boy county yeah, just put it, and then then when you see it from the front angle, when you see it flares out like this as well. So it's not just from the side, you're only seeing it from the side that it flares out like this, so that when the wind hits it, it goes around your head. It yeah, does, so and it's why, why, why are the shades? Why are the shades all the way up to the top of what I presume is an elongated skull? When, when, you're, when you're in that position, when you're in that position, holding your, your aero position, Pete, right? You don't yeah. you're not lifting your head, you have to keep your head down so you can only look up through your eyes, like through the eyebrows. So no, that's no, why no, the no. voice is there. I'm no, serious. No. The new serious. Dune movie well, looks well, shitty. Telling you, <laughs> yeah, no, honest to God, I, 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 I married one on Saturday. My God, he looks like he looks like his name is Joshua, and he comes from Black Rock. I'm married one on Saturday. I, I think that is immense. I think that's immense. I think, and I also like his. Uh, you go for the whole arrow look, and then you stick a neck warmer around your neck, which just ruins the whole thing. <laughs> it's that slows you down. You don't get what's going on, and you could you could wear your Apple um, goggles inside there, and nobody'd know. You could be playing Lance, Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong was a cheat. <laughs> All the drugs in the That's off the, the off the charts, stupid. That that helmet is. That's it's immense. I love it. I, it's I, fucking it's stupid. Poor. It's poor. It's poor. There's no way that's aerodynamic. <laughs> it's poor. It is. It's it can't be. You'd have to be. You'd have to be climbing over the front of the handlebars with your head down over the front wheel. Physically, for that to be fucking there, then I mean, has but he got it on backwards? Has he that, got no, it on backwards? That's, that's the thing when you're how you're you're down and they're not even looking up, that's why the visor is there instead of wearing it's glasses. Just, they should be making them smaller, exactly. That's aerodynamic. Well, aerodynamically, and it's been proven the wider it goes to match into your boy. Who listen, come here and I tell you. If Wind I went out and made something that size and just went in and went, aerodynamically, lads, that's fucking deadly. They just think that fella is just so mad, there's no point in arguing him. I'm telling you now, right? Stop typing um, on your computer because I don't want to, I don't want to see the wind tunnel tests. That is not <laughs> aerodynamic. Portable VAR machine. It is. But that helmet's worth about 
800 quid. Oh, I'd geez. say, I'll tell you what that looks like. That looks like the things you see in the shops, right? You know, when you're walking through the shops and, and the oil, and there's always a pillar in the middle of the oil, right? <coughs> and there's a unit stuck on the wall where you can scan your fucking shopping to see what price it is. You know, you're not sure on the price. You just go <laughs> beep off that fella's head, and then you can find out, oh, yeah, these bleeding fig rolls are 149. <laughs> <laughs> I mean? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is. I'd, I'd love, to, but I want to see get the goalkeepers wearing those helmets and goal. Be immense, wouldn't it? You wouldn't have to worry about kicking the head. Peter Check with one of those helmets on. <laughs> there's, def, there's definitely people going around now on bleeding 80 quid racers around Dublin with them on them, isn't there? Ah, the uh, racer they found the skip and they spot this thing. Do you know what I mean? So look, at this, look at this helmet, but but it does, you like it's it's the wider. It, Blends in with your shoulders, makes you faster. It's a load of me bollocks. I could make something yep. that shape out of paper mache, paint the yellow and black, and go here. <laughs> look at this, and they go just. It's. I'd encourage anyone that's watching it, right? Anyone that's watching it, I'm telling you now, go and see if you can find it. It's on YouTube. Go and look for Visma Lisa bike um, time trial helmet, and you'll see them. It, it looks worse in real reality. Like it actually, the whole thing is just like a basically just trying to turn your head into your shoulders. Essentially, it's just like they've taken away your head and just left the stub of a neck that goes into a point. When they look down, I swear to God, it goes because they just, goes across. just build it right down to his shoulders. Then I don't know, I don't know. cover his ears. Should the wind's gonna hit his ears now and it's gonna slow him down? He's fucked at the time, for it. <laughs> fuck exactly. For it. Anyhow, um, cool. there we go. That's, that's the, to wrap up the show. The show where we've discussed many things, mm. uh, many yeah. things there. But before we wrap up the show. I think it's very important if you see go into the description you'll find the link to fan support and field banks and the lighthouse um foundation which is in dublin um both doing exceptionally good work for what's going on and especially all the the trials and tribulations that we have um in society at this moment in time both services are essential um, and needed to, to to support the lesser well off in society and, and and touch wood that never of course to anyone that's watching the t- channel or whatever's there but for the people that need the help it's, it's there for them and it's definitely a lifeline for what's going on so if you can we're trying to get the 10 grand quick you get the 10 grand quick and get that guy to start really plugging mine um so the, let's get in there i plug let's yours every me. single show i know and i'm just saying that to make them do the money quicker oh, right and okay. then we can just do, do you know what i mean i'm, I'm helping you <laughs> <me. laughs> no i thought that was an um, ac- accusation there look i really really do something for me when when he's finished this no 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 no, no. <laughs> yeah, so. we want to get we want to get the 10 grand because it's they're such overwhelmingly good causes Um, i know people who who, who volunteer in in the lighthouse as well so it, it's it's immense the one of their sister i was in one of their sister um things yesterday um down in Greystones in, in swimming they have a, a sauna down there as well it's attached to them so it's a it's 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 a, it's a brilliant they the work they do was fantastic and, and it's it's eminently worth all the support that goes on. Um, you, you don't need to say anything about fan support and field banks in the UK. Um, it's terrible that, that they're so required in a modern society. Massively um, required. Yeah. yeah. And there's many social and uh, economic reasons for us that we won't get into it. But yeah, um, that's what's, what's going on. So the second thing I start with this week, I, I tweeted it today. Um, if you can, give me a quid. <coughs> Give me a thousand quid, whatever you can give me, give me. Um, give I've got my force race, force force race on Saturday. Uh, Where is the film? It's in it's in Kerry, it's in Kenmare and Kerry. So there I don't you go. Any over the bridge from Kerry, go down. It's like, it's like an absolute the river. <laughs> my uncle, my uncle, who's going to be on here in a couple of weeks' time out when the international break is on, um, and yeah. he is on a young fellow. He's coming down with me um, to take a few pictures and to to, to keep me occupied because it's a long drive down on Saturday morning. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to do it. I, I, okay, I'll put the I'll put I'll, I'll pin myself to the mast here. I'm hoping to do it inside two hours and thirty five minutes. Right. Okay. So if we do that, the quickest. Is there any way we can check the official time? Yeah, I'll send on the official time. Of t- no, I don't want a screenshot. I want to where you're getting off the website. Like, is there a website? No, it's, look, hang on, hang on, hang on. And I'm, and I'm, I'm genuine about this, right? So hang on a second. And, and, and I'll send you the links when it comes up. I'll so tell you what then. Donate, right? Or share the link. But like, just promise yourself that I've filled look, this in two hours 35. There you there's, go, yeah. There's, there's a genuine thing there. You can see that. With ah, the very good. Videos. Very good, right. right. Okay. So, so Phil, if Phil does it, you all have to bleed and donate if he does it inside two hours 35. Right? Yeah, that's, that's the aim here. Two hours 35. Donate anyway. Donate anyway. Yeah, yeah but... Yeah, 50 quid deep. ahead if he does it inside 235. No, I, I, I've, I've never gotten inside two hours 40. For, two hours 49 is the quickest I've done the distance. So to get inside And you're trying to take 14 minutes of it? Yeah, 
All right, okay. Well, you must be wearing two of them bleeding helmets, are you? <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> so, in training, in training without anyone to race against, and when I say race against, I'm not but like just having a target in front of me to hit, right? Yeah. I've done the full distance in two hours and 25 minutes, right? Nice. nice. But that's without, the, that's without the kayaking. Yeah, okay. The kayaking is the, is the big lottery on this one, right? Right, okay. Well, listen, both links are in the description. If you, I, I keep saying it, and I'm gonna keep saying it all the time. There's loads and loads of people watching this show. There's mm -hmm. loads and loads and loads of people download this show. And if everyone that downloads or watches goes onto the links and gives a, a euro to each of them, we'll piss through this ten grand and five grand. We look, genuinely we will. Um, like we're doing our best. We're putting out there as much as we we possibly can. We're trying to do a golf day um, to raise more money that way. And um, we'll try to do more stuff. But like, um, I've actually just to let people know. On the fan support and uh, field banks and lighthouse thing, I've decided that there's no point in waiting for five grand to come in for each of them. So what we're going to do is when it gets to a certain point, we're going to start sending them money because they haven't got the time to wait around for money, these people. Like, this is how yep. serious it is. Yep. So I think we're up around somewhere closing in on two grand. So I think when it gets to two grand, we're going to actually take a thousand and send it to both of them and just keep records of that and keep screenshots of it and the whole lot. And um, when they get to the five grand each then we'll announce that they've got to the five grand each but genuinely look just give give a euro here or a euro there and honestly if, if everyone does it we, we lash through it like absolutely lash through it. do you know what i mean so um yeah that's that's about it on then yeah so i'm looking for i, I, I don't know if i'll be on next monday night because i might be just banjaxed no, <laughs> Oh, and I've see. only got four. I've only got four weeks until the next one, so I need to recover next week and then go again the following week. Start training again the following week. Just lying week, there so, for yeah. four weeks and then go up and do the next one. I wish I would. Um, but yeah, so somebody says I'll give you fifty if you do it with that Star Wars bike helmet. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'll consider it. But like to, to get the Star Wars bike helmet, I'll have to spend yeah, eight hundred to get the fifty off you. Exactly. I'd rather give the eight hundred of a donation yeah. to yeah. make more sense. Do you know what I mean? Fair fair I could make you one of them helmets by the weekend. Genuinely. Mock his head, make a mock his head version. Yeah. Big <laughs> fucking a blow torch and a milk crate, and I'll have one of them. Maybe what color do you want to do? Yellow. To be yellow. The, the next, the next one up in April. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drag that Gav down to do a bit of video when we're down there, so we can. So you Where get is that one? Glendalock, so it's quite handy. That's oh, not too far away. Is any is that bill? Yeah, there's pubs in Glendalock and all. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. yeah, and then I might I might even put you up in September when we're going because Steve was coming down to Loch Derg as well because Steve was part of my um. Where's Loch Derg? Team. That's in in Tipperary slash Clare. So we have okay, when, we have when a, is that? we have a, we have an apartment booked for Friday and Saturday night down there. When is that? Uh, September. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. Right, so yeah, the apartment's yeah. booked. Have, no, have I'm a taking booked part around. I'm just going down and have a few Ooh, gargles and take, a, take photos, you know. Right, yeah, yeah, so. savage. You can yeah. stay because we're going to have a few drinks after. It's like last year when I crossed the line at half 11 and Steve was standing there waiting for me with a bottle of beer in Moretti, Moretti and it was 29 degrees. So the best thing for hydration is dehydration is to do what? Lash yeah. a load of beers into you. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's very healthy. Yeah. Yeah. It's Happy. the best life threatening. Life threatening. Right, let's go. I love to do. That's been the show. That's been we've got loads of shows coming up this week. The greatest is being pushed to the, the mm. force not go around and the greatest has been pushed out to the following tours day, lads, because I need mm -hmm. to get some sleep before before mm -hmm. Saturday. So um that's what it is. I'll um, be here at ten in the morning. Show. You'll be there at ten in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we have more shows as the week goes on. And we've also got the Europa actually, Gav, it's good that the greatest not on this week because the Europa League's on tours tonight and we're playing Sparta Prague in mm -hmm. the for, in the force knockout phase. So it's a good time to do that. That's it. That's the end of the show. Good night. God bless. Talk to us next week, maybe, sometimes. Maybe sometimes. Sometimes. Hit the button. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>